In this video, I will show you how to take this crazy piecewise function and do some wicked function analysis on it. We're going to write a piecewise function, talk about the domain and range, discover the zeros and the y-intercepts, uh, increasing and decreasing intervals, as well as points of discontinuity. Sounds like a lot because it is. First of all, let's uh, write a piecewise function representing this monster. Okay, let's start with this piece right here. What is this? This is a horizontal line. Well, it's a piece of a horizontal line. Um, so, a horizontal line has the equation y equals something. So this is a, p a part of the line y equals 2. So that's going to give me my first uh, piece. Now, I'm not going to write y equals 2 right here because the f of x is the y. So I basically already have y equals. So that's why I'm just going to put the 2 part because this is y equals 2. Now, you have to say the domain of this piece of the graph. So this piece of the graph is when the x values are between a negative infinity and negative 2. In other words, this first part of the graph goes from here to here if you stare at the x-axis while you look at it. Um, so that's the domain uh, from negative infinity to uh, negative 2. I'm going to put a round parenthesis here because it's an open circle and this means that um, negative 2 is not included in that part of the function. If you are someone who likes inequalities, you might prefer to write x is less than negative 2 for the domain instead. Anyway, let's switch over and talk about the next part of the graph. All right, so the next part of the graph is this part right here. Um, okay, so it's really this middle portion of the graph is this whole thing. Even though it looks like two different pieces, this is really one function that covers this. Can you see what the parent function is for this whole thing. Um, the parent function involved here is um, 1 over x. Okay, y equals 1 over x. Hopefully, you have already memorized that the parent function y equals 1 over x uh, has this basic look to it. All right, we're going to have a branch in this quadrant, and we're going to have another branch in this quadrant. However, um, notice that the asymptotes are the x and y axis. So in this case, it looks like the horizontal asymptote is still the x axis, but the vertical asymptote uh, is at 1, x equals 1. It's been shifted 1 to the right. So for that reason, I know that I need to take the parent function and shift it 1 to the right. The way you do that is by putting actually x minus 1 into it. This shifts everything over 1 to the right. So that's why this piece of the piecewise function is going to be 1 over x minus 1. All right, now it's going to be this part of the graph from here to here. All right, so the domain is x values. So I'm saying the x values where this part of the graph exists. So that's going to be from negative 2 to 4. Again, I do not need two separate pieces um, because this parent function is a, has both parts in it. All right, so this function right here includes both branches, so we're good. So negative 2 to 4 is the domain now. All right. So, oh, uh, I need square brackets because these are closed 
circles. So uh, the negative four and uh, sorry, the negative two and the positive four must be included. So from negative two to positive four brackets. Okay, or if you prefer inequalities, then you would say negative two is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to four. Moving on to the third and final part of this function, let me clean up a little bit. All right, so now I'm looking at this right here. Shme, ding, shme. All right, <clears throat> I'm looking at this guy. Well, uh, the parent function, of course, is going to be uh, y equals x to the third power. That's the parent function we memorized long ago that um, x to the third power looks like this. All right, it's like half of a downward facing parabola, and then the other half is an upward facing parabola. It's called a point of inflection right here in the middle. Now, that normally would happen. The point of inflection is at the origin 0, 0. But in this case, the point of inflection is uh, 5 units to the right. That's why instead of simply having um, x to the third power, I need to shift this 5 units to the right, and that will be achieved by putting x minus 5 inside. That's actually 5 units to the right. So that's why um, the third piece of the piecewise function is going to be x minus 5 cubed. Time for the domain. Uh, this part of the graph exists on these x values from 4 to positive infinity. All right, that's where this function lives. Um, notice that we have an open circle, so I'm going to have to use parentheses when I write the beginning of my domain. So I'm going to put parentheses 4 to infinity. Okay, the 4 is not included because it's an open circle. Um, or if you like inequalities, you can say x is greater than 4. Boom! Nailed it. That is the piecewise function. All right, uh, let me just clean this up a tiny bit right before we move on. <clears throat> okay, now let's talk about the domain of the function. Um, all right, so remember. We're talking about the domain of this function as a whole. Uh, I think I'm just going to erase these colors it's bothering me right now. When we talk about the domain of the function, we're talking about all of the x values represented by this function. Um, to help me visualize it, sometimes I like to use a vertical line that I sort of pass through everything. Okay, so as I move this vertical line around, um, I'm looking to see, are there, are there any gaps? Are there any places where the vertical line doesn't touch? As long as I'm touching any part of the graph, that means I'm, there's an x value there. So I have x values here, 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 here. I come to an interesting spot right here. But because of the lower piece down here at uh, negative 2, um, well, down here at uh, negative 2, just a little bit below the x-axis, see the closed circle? That's an x value, so I have x values there. More x values, more x values, more x values. Uh-oh, here comes something interesting. Boom! Do I have any x values right here? No. This is an asymptote. This is the one place where there are no x values. Okay, everywhere else I have x values, x values, x values, x values, boom. I still have an x value because of the closed circle. x values, x values, x values. Everywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity, as I move my purple line through, 
I am constantly touching the graph from the left to right. Everywhere is touching except for right here. So that is why uh, I'm going to have to split the domain into two parts. Only two, not one, two, three, four. Um, I can cover both of these pieces with one interval, one unbroken interval. This is not a break in the uh, x values. All right, this x value is uh, covered by the closed circle. So this first part will go from negative infinity to 1. And then the second part will go from 1 to positive infinity. Only two intervals, no more than that. All right, um, so the domain will be negative infinity to 1 union 1 to infinity. Okay, the vertical asymptote is the only spot where there are no x values. Okay, what about the range? Um, the range represents the y values of a graph. So I'm going to use a horizontal line to help me visualize where my y values are. I have to watch out for any place where there will be a gap in the y values, a break in the y values. As long as I'm touching the function with this line, there's no gap. Um, so I have y values here. I'm touching, I'm touching, I'm touching. Okay, I'm coming up to an interesting spot. Okay, right here I'm still good. I'm actually, uh, even right here at this spot, I'm still touching because of this um, part of the function over here. And then here I'm still touching. What about right here? Okay, I'm between these pieces, but because of this piece over here, all right, the, the cubic part, I'm still touching. Okay, so I, I'm still touching, still touching, still touching. Still. Look, guys, there is no part on this function. As I move my horizontal line from bottom to top, I am constantly touching some part of this function. There is no break in the y values, none at all. So that's why um, for the range, it's going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, no breaks in the range, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, <clears throat> now the zeros of the function um, this is very closely related to the x-intercepts. So uh, we're looking for where does the function touch the x-axis. I only see one place where the function touches the x-axis, and that's right here. Now, this, the difference between an x-intercept and a zero is just this. Um, an x-intercept is an ordered pair. So if I wanted to say what are the x-intercepts of the function, I would say 5 comma 0. However, a 0 is just a number. So I won't say 5 comma 0. For a 0, I will simply say 5. That's the only difference. So in this case, we we're asked to find the zeros of the function, and there's only one of them, and it is 5. All right, don't put 5 comma 0, just put 5. Notice when we're talking about intercepts, that's an ordered pair, though. Um, that's the same thing for when we talk about y-intercept. So, uh, in other words, the y-intercept is where the graph touches the y-axis, which is right here. Um, this will be an ordered pair, though. So this will be 0 comma negative 1. If you just put negative 1, you're going to lose points. An intercept is an ordered pair, put 0, comma, negative 1. Okay, now it's time to talk about intervals of increasing and intervals of decreasing. Um, here's what I need to emphasize to you before we do this. Intervals of increasing and decreasing are always x values like domain. So whatever I'm going to put down here, I'm only talking about 
x values, people. Only x values. <clears throat> so imagine that you are traveling across this function. Um, like you're some creature, like maybe this is some kind of a, a crazy interdimensional mountain range. And you're, uh, you're walking across the path and you're, you're going up and you're, you're going down, but you're moving from left to right as you go. Um, <clears throat> for some parts of this graph, you're going to be going uphill. And for other parts, you're going to be going downhill. Now, what's happening for this first part? Of the graph. Am I going uphill or downhill? Haha, -ha, neither, right? It's flat. So that is neither increasing nor decreasing. Okay, so um, now remember, all I care about are x values. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to translate it down here to the x axis. So this interval that I just colored in blue is neither increasing nor decreasing. What happens next in my journey? Um, well, next I pick up right here, and all of a sudden I am going downhill. From left to right, I'm going down, down, down. Okay, so what's going on? <clears throat> so um, as far as x values, that means I'm going downhill from here to here. Why is that so crooked? I don't know. I can do a little bit better than that. Okay, <clears throat> from there to there. That is a decreasing interval. Um, let me just erase. Um, <clears throat> so I'm highlighting the x-axis because x values, guys. All we care about are x values. So sure, I'm highlighting the whole thing, but then brr, x values only. Um, now, as I continue my journey, um, what about this part? From left to right, I'm once again going downhill, okay? From here to here, that was decreasing. So that is going to be another decreasing interval from here to here on the x-axis. Okay, now, now I jump over to this part of the graph. As I go from left to right, I'm going uphill, uphill. So for this portion of the graph, uh, it's going to be increasing. So that means on the x-axis, it is increasing from here to here. All right, so these colors tell you the story. Remember, the blue was neither increasing nor decreasing. Um, and then I have a red interval that's decreasing, another red interval that's decreasing, and a green interval that is increasing. Notice I'm referring to this red as two separate intervals. Um, part of that is because I've got an asymptote here. Um, the asymptote is not included in the domain, so this definitely splits this up into two separate intervals. <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess first, problem number six is increasing intervals. We only have one of those. Okay, so our increasing interval is from four to infinity. All right, so we're gonna put four to infinity for the increasing interval. You always use parentheses for increasing and decreasing intervals. Um, the, uh, the endpoints themselves are not, are not included. All right, it, and it doesn't matter whether they're open circles or closed circles. Just don't don't use any square brackets when you're doing increasing and decreasing intervals. Next, we're going to talk about the decreasing intervals. And remember, we had two of those. One of them is from negative two to one. So we will have negative two to one, only parentheses, no brackets. Union. And then the other decreasing interval is from 1 to 4. So 1 to 4. Okay, we don't mention the blue because that was neither increasing nor decreasing. All right, so that's how you do increasing and decreasing intervals. What is next? Discontinuity. Let's do a quick refresher on what discontinuity means. 
A discontinuity is some type of a break in the function. Okay, that's going to be some type of break in the graph. And we have three flavors of discontinuity that we have learned about. Um, there's a jump discontinuity. Uh, and that's where the graph jumps from one point to another. So there's going to be like a gap there. Um, another type of discontinuity is called removable. And that's just when you have a hole in the graph, all right, where it's just missing a single point. And then the third type is called infinite. And that's where you have an asymptote that is causing the break in the graph. So you might have um, an asymptote where the function is approaching it on one side, and maybe it's approaching it on another side. Um, but that is called an infinite discontinuity. So let's look back and see what we have. All right, I see that we have a gap right here. All right, we have a break um, at negative 2. That's going to be important. Now, what kind of break is this? What kind of discontinuity? Um, this is that jump discontinuity I was talking about because it's a gap. So we have a jump discontinuity at negative 2. That's how you say it. So we will say jump at negative 2. Um, what else you got? Well, we have a discontinuity happening right here, don't we? Okay, right there. We have an asymptote. Um, and what kind of break is that? What kind of discontinuity is that? We call that an infinite discontinuity. And it is at 1. All right, so we will say that there is an infinite discontinuity at x equals 1. All right, infinite at, oh, um, <clears throat> I just said at negative 2. I should have said x equals negative 2. All right, and what else do we have? Uh, I see that we have a discontinuity right here here as well. That is another jump discontinuity because of the gap. Notice it is at 4. Okay, so we have another jump discontinuity at x equals 4. All right, um, that is going to do it for this video. On the next video, I will show you how to take this crazy piecewise function and do this type of transformation to it. And we'll do that graph together.